everyone, welcome you're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. As the Spain's region of Catalonia strives to declare independence, official Madrid is preparing to take action in an attempt to save the nation's unity. To talk about the Catalonia crisis that has been dramatically looming over Spain, we're joined in the studio today by Maria Galati. She's an expert with Ukraine's Independence Center for Political Studies. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello. So, Catalonian government has been playing this game of cat and mouse with the Spanish government for quite some time now, starting the referendum which uh, uh, took action on October 1st and was declared illegal by um, authorities in Madrid. And now uh, the the leader of the Catalonian region, Puigdemont, while giving his speech, stopped short before declaring independence and called on his government to leave room for the dialogue. What could this mean? Does it mean that the, 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 the Catalonia gave up on its chance for independence? I think that uh, in Catalonia there is no uh, the majority support uh, who is supporting uh, independence. Mm -hmm. It's estimated uh, at the level of 40%. Uh, mostly it's uh, people who, young generation, uh, usually they were educated in the Catalonian system. It means that they um, learned Catalonian language, not Spanish. They also, uh, they were educated as Catalonian. But so correct me if I'm wrong, but the Catalonian uh, educational system is different from what they have in Spain. Yes. Okay. And uh, very often they even, sometimes they don't speak uh, Spanish. At all. At all, yes. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, those people who support independence, they are not uh, Catalonian uh, by origin. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, their parents came to Catalonia to work or because Catalonia is the most, uh, the richest part of Spain. The wealthiest. And uh, it's, it's, it's funny, but uh, it's not Catalonians who support independence, but other people, just young people who Basically, were Basically, those are the children of immigrants yes. who came to Catalonia, but, yes. ori but original Catalonians do not support the uh, some independence. Some support, some not. Uh, like, if you look at all the generation, about 35% of people who about 35 years mm -hmm. old support uh, independence. And uh, if you look at younger generation, uh, it's 18, 40, 24 years old, the, it's about 41%. It means that high percentage uh, of younger people who support independence. But still, Carlos Piedemont stopping short before declaring the independence of the region. Is he waiting for, um, if we could say, a fruitful proposal from the Spain's government at this point? I, I think yes. I think uh, it would be the most beneficial for both sides uh, because uh, the most uh, important things for Catalonia that they don't want to cover expenditures of other regions. So basically they're thriving for yes. economic independence, yes. first of all. And I think they, they will negotiate and in this referendum, uh, it's kind of a sh show to, to, the, to the Madrid uh, that um, they can declare independence, but they actually are open for negotiation. And I assume that economic things will be uh, the, the base for negotiation, actually. Mm -hmm. Mariano Rajoy threatened to take to article of Spain's constitution 155. If he does, what could it mean for Catalonia? Uh, I don't think that he can actually use it because uh, uh, in, uh, according to the constitution of Spain, uh, it is possible to block the decision of, the, of the, this referendum. Uh, it's also possible to uh, put on the vote this decision whether Catalonia should be independent or not. Like a national, re national, uh, national referendum? National referendum, okay. yes. And another thing, it could be voted in the parliament mm -hmm. in both chambers. And uh, for sure it will not be supported because there is no the majority of support uh, among uh, Spanish uh, members of parliament. The referendum itself, was it legal? It was not legal, it was not uh, in accordance with the constitution. Uh, and actually, to have such a referendum, uh, the constitution should be amended. And uh -huh. it should be amended by the majority of uh, both chambers of the parliament. Okay, that's doubtful that, yes. that the official Madrid is going to do that. Now, was the uncertainty happening in Catalonia a lot of, well, not a lot, but uh, several big companies that uh, represent Spanish business and Catalonian business have already stated that they're going to move out of Catalonia if 
the region declares independence. Does that mean that economically Catalonia is going to lose after declaring independence? Exactly. Actually, uh, the biggest problem for business is uh, losing of economic ties. In case of independence, uh, they actually will lose ties inside the Spain, inside mm -hmm. Spain and also inside the European Union. Because European Union will not tolerate it, will not support and will not uh, go again, will not go against uh, Spain. Speaking of support, how high are the chances that international community is going to support the declaration of independence by Catalonia? I think it's very low because it actually it uh, raised the question of um, other pro of the problems which exist in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's, if you look at European map, we'll see that uh, many European countries have uh, similar problems. Like uh, what countries? Like Belgium, like uh, Switzerland. Because we are not talking about them now, because we are not deeply analyzed, but we still see conflict between uh, Flemish people and also uh, French people in Belgium. It's quite strong, uh, but because of a uh, good economic situation, uh, it's not appearing as a conflict in Spain. So there is a chance uh, when those countries, meaning Belgium and Switzerland, when they dive into crisis, the, the same thing may happen, may happen in there. Yeah, exactly. It may happen in other countries. You know, we have differences in even Germany between uh, different regions and uh, uh, they, they have more or less, sometimes it's one people, but they have serious differences between them. And also we have small uh, people which, for example, reside in, in Germany, we have Slavish Germans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's in, in every country we have uh, small people residing on a particular territory and they can, they may want to have own country and to, to, to create own country. Do we have similar regions in Ukraine? Uh, basically, we in Ukraine, we, we had Crimea. Uh -huh. uh, we can, but, but not because of Russian population, but because of Crimean Tatars, uh, who are now uh, um, are indigenous people, yeah. and it, it is officially. Uh, it's very important because, and they can, they could actually uh, announce independence if they want, because um, it's like it's normal. It's according to international law. Uh, indigenous people have right uh, for self determination. Uh, I don't think it's possible now for Crimean yeah, Tatar population yes, in Crimea, yes. but. They did have a chance to do yes. that. They would have had a chance to do that. But in Ukraine, we also have other territories like, like what? Um, Zakarpatia. Uh -huh. Zakarpatia is also it's a big problem because uh, we have a lot of uh, Hungarian people there. And we have also another region uh, close to Romania. Uh, and uh, it's also we have a mixture of Ukrainians and Romanians. The proof of that would be the controversy around the language law. Exactly. Right? Uh, exactly. Recently adopted in Ukraine. Yes. Could this, could this be the start of those territories trying to proclaim independence? I don't think this. For it's not an economic crisis, but still. I don't think uh, currently we um, may have such problem. Uh, but uh, really, it's very good that we adopted such law because uh, now we will have chance to avoid such story. Mm -hmm. Because as we see, uh, Catalonia decided to declare independence because it was actually, uh, for a long time, it was formed as separate unit. Mm -hmm. It had uh, own culture, it has own culture, it has own language, and kids in the school and universities are educated in Catalonia, not, not Spanish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have in Ukraine in such territories where kids and students are educated in own language or they don't know language of the uh, of the big mm -hmm. country or like uh, a state language they don't know, uh, it may raise uh, such problem. Could this crisis in Spain, which is happening right now, generate into something bigger, meaning a military conflict between Catalonia and mainland Spain? Uh, it's, it's a tough question. Um, I assume that not, but uh, taking into account the mentality of Spanish people, they are more hot than our people. Yeah. It, may, uh, it may lead. I, I don't think that the European Union will allow. Okay. It means that it will be, if something happened, like some violence, serious violence, I think the European Union will put pressure on both Catalonian government and uh, Spanish authorities. Spanish government. Overall, what is your forecast on the situation around Catalonia and Spain? What's going to happen? 
I expect negotiations and, uh, and maybe, maybe maybe Catalonia will receive more uh, not independence but uh, some some additional benefits for them maybe economic economic, economic one economic preferences maybe they will have uh, uh, to pay less or smaller amount of taxes mm -hmm. to to the, to Spain and could this mean then that the government of Catalonia would have to be changed since they didn't quite fulfill the promises they gave out to to uh, to the people. But not not necessary now. But maybe there will be elections. Maybe it will be solution that there are not elections and uh, the government will be for sure changed. Thank you for your commentaries and thank you for such an interesting conversation. Thank you. That was Maria Galati. She's an expert with Ukraine's Independent Center for Political Studies. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.